Okay, hello again. So this is an unexpected video I didn't expect to make in my series comparing the Cortex-M33 cores in the RP2350 with the RISC-V Hazard 3 cores in that same chip. I have found myself needing to make another video and uh, it's this time it's uh, all about compilers. Compilers matter. So in this video I'm going to show you how you can get a massive performance boost using the new RP2350, so things like the Raspberry Pi Pico 2 or the Challenger Plus uh, RP2350 board can all get a boost by using the right compiler. Now, you better buckle up because it's a jungle. This really is quite messy in places. So let's find out what I have discovered. Okay, quick recap, the RP2040 had two Cortex-M0 cores in it. The RP2350, the new chip from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, has two Cortex-M33 cores, but it also has two Hazard 3 RISC-V cores, and you can only use two, two cores at once. Uh, you can't use four cores, so you, it's basically dual architecture, dual core, dual architecture. Now, this is where we were at in my previous videos. We saw that the RP2040 took 40 seconds to run my NQueens benchmark. All my source code is on my GitHub repository. And then the ARM cores and the RISC-5 cores basically took about half the time. So the new chip, the RP2350, uh, is twice as fast. And when I saw those results, I was very happy. Everything was great. Uh, that's as it should be. Uh, really didn't have any queries really I thought that was fine I then did my whetstone test that's basically floating point test and we saw that the Cortex M33 calls were five times faster than the RP2040 uh, five times faster than the Cortex M0 plus calls and that the risk 5 core was actually 26 times slower so that the new core was 26 times faster uh, and that was okay because the uh, Cortex M33 has got a floating point unit. So it's got hardware that handles floating point numbers, whereas the RP2040 and the RISC-V calls don't have that. However, I was a little surprised that the, uh, the how slow the uh, RP2350 RISC-V calls were. I was expecting them to do better than that, to be even slower than the Cortex M0 calls was a bit of a surprise. So then I actually got a comment on that video from Luke Wren. Who's Luke Wren? Well, Luke Wren is the engineer that designed the RISC-V cores. So uh, thanks to Luke and the other people at Raspberry Pi for watching my videos. Uh, I've had other engineers from Raspberry Pi comment on, on previous videos as well. And so what does Luke say here? Here's everything he says. But notice here he says, The RP2040 has highly optimized software float built into the ROM, whereas the RISC-V cores are using whatever junk the compiler provides. And then he says further on, if you're using the Core 5 tool chain, i.e. you're on Windows, then I believe you get just an RV32 iMac soft float library, which is missing all the bit manipulation instructions. And bit manipulation helps out a lot with soft float point performance. So, Indeed, I was using Windows for these tests. In fact, I was using uh, Visual Studio Code and I was using the Visual uh, Pico Visual Studio Code extension, which is an official extension that basically downloads the SDK and the toolchain. In fact, that extension has got a project generator in it. It allows you to switch between different versions of the SDK. You don't need to worry about all the environment variables and it automatically downloads everything you need. So it's a really, really easy way of using the Raspberry Pi Pico with inside of VS Code. It just offers you all the options. You just say, yep, compile. And that's what I used. And that's what I used for both ARM and for RISC-V. And I assumed that that was, it's the official, the official VS Code extension. I assumed that was a reasonable way to do it. However, let's just take a step back and just think for a second. The Pico can be programmed using three different hosts, Windows, Linux and Mac OS. There are two different types of CPU architecture now, ARM and RISC-V. So already there are, uh, you know, six combinations here. I could be doing Windows ARM, Windows RISC-V, Linux ARM, Linux RISC-V and so on. But it's actually more than that because there are different versions of the compilers and different compilers. So you've got GCC version 13, GCC version 14. You can use 
LLVM with Clang. Or you can use the Core 5 GCC build for RISC 5, which is what Luke was mentioning. So if you take a combination of all the different operating systems, of all the different compilers, of all the different uh, CPU architects you can target, you can see there's quite a lot of options here. And somewhere on the line, by choosing Windows with the Core 5 GCC build using... Um, uh, VS Code targeting ARM or RISC V, something wasn't quite optimal. Well, that's what Luke was suggesting. So I had to see whether that was true. And so I switched to Linux and I downloaded and installed the Pico SDK and toolchain manually via the command line. I also used VS Code on Linux to see if there are any differences. Spoilers, it gives you the same results as Windows. And I even went one step further. I compiled GCC 14.2.1 specifically for RISC 5, in fact, specifically for the Hazard 3 uh, cores with all of the relevant options myself. I went ahead and did that. And there's a bit of information in the documentation saying, well, look, you should either use the core V GCC compilers or build your own. And it gives you the instructions here on all this stuff here. ZBA, ZBB, ZBS, ZBKB. These are all the extensions that the Hazard 3 processor supports beyond the standard 32-bit integer with multiply and, and so on. So I went ahead and built the most precise version of the GCC compiler to see what would happen. So this, remember, was the situation. We had 50 whetstones and uh, 1.9 whetstones for the uh, for the uh, risk five. Well, once I used the new compilers, that jumped up to twenty five. So this is pretty insignificant because first of all, it means that the the uh, floating point unit only gives you double performance which is a lot less. But more importantly, now we can see that these RISC-5 cores are faster than the Cortex-M0 cores, which is what we expect because they are running at a higher clock speed and so on. So this looks like a much more uh, traditional picture, what I would have expected to have found out first time round. now using the SDK uh, and Linux and the command line, not using what comes with VS Code. If you do use VS Code, as I said, on Linux, you get the same results as what I had before. You get these 1.9 results. Only when you use the uh, SDK manually installed with the tool chain the, and the new compiler, and in fact, the older compiler, you get these numbers. So then I thought to myself, well, shouldn't I go ahead and test some of the other RISC-V numbers? And look what happened. The N Queen's result goes down, which is better because it takes less time. So it's now faster than the Cortex-M33 cores. And then if I use my Ocean 2 uh, encryption algorithm, the one I wrote myself, videos about that here on this channel, then look at this, it goes down a long, long way. So it now becomes faster, significantly faster than the uh, Cortex-M33 cores and way faster than the uh, Cortex-M0 cores. So at this point now, RISC-V is just in the lead, except for that floating point stuff. RISC-V is better across the board. At this point, I was ready to rant. I was ready to explode. How can the RISC-V compilers be in such a bad state that if I compile on Windows or compile using uh, VS Code, uh, I get you know, uh, terrible results. But if I do it using, uh, you know, the command line, I get all these better results. Suddenly RISC-V has, has blossomed. It's turned out to be quite amazing. Uh, why so many variations of the compilers? I was really ready to explode. But I thought to myself, let me now retest ARM using the command line rather than VS Code. Am I going to be surprised? There's going to be a difference. Well, look at that. It did go down. It's still risk five is slightly better in this case, but it's very close now. I mean, we're talking fractions of a second now for this test. So I thought, well, let's carry on. Let's look at Ocean 2. This is where I was at. That now goes down to 14.93. So this has all happened because I'm using Linux with the SDK manually installed and the toolchain manually installed, not relying on VS Code to download it. If I use VS Code again, I repeat on Linux, I get the old results. If I do it with uh, the manual way, I get these results without even having to recompile uh, GCC 14 with all, you know, whatever. And so what about the whetstones? Am I going to see any difference here? Well, <laughs> look at this. Prepared, you know, prepare for this now. Look, 263 
whetstones I get, uh, and this is mega whetstone instructions per second, uh, as I cover in my previous video. So now when the floating point unit is properly programmed, uh, using the uh, right compiler and the right setup, I now get an absolutely massive, and this is much more realistic. So the Cortex M0 is going to be the slowest, even though it's finely tuned as much as it can be. The RISC V cores are doing well once all that bit manipulation stuff, and you're using the right soft uh, float libraries. But when you're using hardware, phew, mass a massive a leap, a massive leap, and that's what you're going to expect. So what do we know from all this now? Well, in general, the RP2350 is one and a half to two times faster than the RP2040 for just general stuff, as you saw there with N-Queens and with my encryption algorithm and so on. For floating point operations, the Cortex M33 is 26 times faster than the Cortex M0 in the RP2040 uh, and 10 times faster than the Hazard Risk v uh, processor, remembering that the RP2040 and the Hazard don't have floating point units. And if performance matters at all, install the SDK and the toolchain via the command line and do that on Linux. Don't use VS Code. I was actually going to make a video about how this VS Code extension is great, brilliant way to get into writing C and C++ for the uh, new chip. It works across all manner of boards, including the uh, iLabs Challenger Plus board, including the actual Pico 2. Uh, absolutely brilliant. Uh, and it's a good way. And I may do that uh, just because of how useful it is with the project generator and all that stuff. But if you're actually writing to get some performance, then you have to do it on Linux, manually installing the SDK and the tool chain, following the instructions that they give you inside uh, over on the Raspberry Pi website. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explained. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>